Hello folks, welcome to Big Props. I'm your host, James Weatherly, for this exciting series. The first airplane we're going to look at is the awesome KC-97 Strato Cruiser Strato Tanker. Wow, what an awesome airplane, gigantic for its day. But before we get into the details of it, I want to turn the clock back to 1945, let you look at the original United States Army Air Force promo film. Wow. The crew has its own automatic entrance. The plane is constructed with two decks and a two-story cabin. hundred and forty feet of wing spread, a hundred and ten feet long. The C-97 is the Army's largest transport. Look at the specs on this airplane. A beast. 175,000 pound takeoff weight. In that days, that was gigantic. And notice, a 4,300 mile range, and because it was pressurized, could fly at high altitudes and had four 4,360 radial engines. These are basically four engines bolted together. A ton of power. Wow, look at the cockpit in this kind of greenhouse effect with windows everywhere. When you look inside this cockpit, if you're not used to these kind of airplanes, you see these jillions and jillions of gauges, all these analog dials. As you start out, you see the flight engineer controlled all the aircraft systems. And up front, you look at the pilots and go like, wow, this is definitely not glass. The only thing glass are the windows you're looking at. Everything else is an analog knobs and dials, and they're flying long-range flights with this. Awesome. I flew these kind of airplanes. They're a bygone era, but man, I'd like to salute all those brave men that flew these airplanes in defense of freedom for various countries. As we continue the walk around of this beast, just looking at these 4360 engines, wow awesome. If you've never seen one of these started, take a look at this next film as we watch an actual C-97 starting up. As we continue our walk around, you're going to see something kind of strange. Here, with a propeller airplane, there's a jet engine, one on either side. This was an era where, to speed up airplanes and give them more performance, they hung jet engines on the side. This is the very famous J-47 engine made by General Electric. There were over 30,000 of them made. They're using this configuration for the B-36 bomber, the B-47. Here, I brought in an expert who's got a B-47, excuse me, a J-47 engine in his backyard. Here we go. He's going to tell you about this awesome engine. There's the data plate for the engine. And if we take a look back here, you can see that this engine has the older style of individual combustor cans. Those are technically actual cans because what we're looking at is the outer combustor case. Inside these cases is the combustor liner. So the case was what the original name can was applied to. It's quite nice. It's got an integral debris shield in there or a de debris screen. As we continue our walk around the airplane, it's very clear there's like a double-decker fuselage. In fact, that's completely right. The wing was started and the fuselage at a base of an old B-29, and then they built a second level, a double-decker, long before the Airbus 380, and it was pressurized. But this variant was not only used for the C-97 and the KC-97, it also became the Boeing 377 airliner. 
Wow, was awesome. Flown all the way around the world by airlines like BOAC, the predecessor of British Airways, Pan Am. All sorts of airlines operate this great airplane. Now, as we move to the tail of the airplane, we're going to see what this version, the KC-97 Stratotanker, was for. First, air-to-air -air refueling. As they had early jets like the B-47, those engines suck tons of gas, so they need to be able to refuel them in flight to extend their range. Hey, I've brought in some old clips of in-flight refueling and even a veteran who served as a boom operator on this. Let's take a look at this section. Uh, you could use the lights to indicate forward, backward, so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And most of your refuelings were done, uh, especially in 135s, they were done uh, basically radio silence. Uh -huh. Because after all, if you're over enemy territory, you don't need to give any clues. Right. So it was done radio silence and used director lights. The only time you you would use the radio, uh, we always use the radio, of course, beforehand. Make sure you get a radio check with the bombers or fighters. And then normally we'd go radio silence just for practice. It has been my absolute pleasure to host this big prop program on the Strato Tanker. Hey, I've turned on some nice music. Just relax with the walk around and join us for our next big props program. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.